Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am <coughs> Sally Rani on the behalf of Journalism and Mass Communication Program of Navdashna University. Welcome you all to the release of Campus Observer. This event is going to be a star-studded affair as we are fortunate to have a panel of prolific editors consisting of Ajay Umar, the editor-in-chief of Navgujarat Summer, Ketan Trivedi, editor in Chitralekha Digital, Uncle Jain, the service editor for BBC News Gujarati, and Preston Thomas, the Crown and Eagle editor at Hindustan Times. We welcome you all to this event. Today we have with us Ms. Tejal Ami, the chairperson of Navrashna Educational Society and the director of Jyoti Limited, along with being the full-time director of JSL Industries. Her deep and focused involvement in several social cultural activities gives her a profile of someone who looks at the involvement in several com contemporary cha challenges facing Vodka <coughs> City. She is also the founding director and chairperson of organizing committee of Vadodara Marathon. In 2016, she was conferred with Glory of Gujarat Award the, by the Indian Council of Social Welfare, Gujarat State, presented by yeah. the Honorable Governor of Gujarat, Sri O.P. Kohli. We are glad to have with us Mrs. Sandhya Gautier who is a trustee on the board of the Navrachna Education Society and member of the managing committee of the Navrachna Education Society, which runs a number of schools and the Navrachna University and Baroda. Her articles have appeared in national newspapers like the Times of India, the Rajali is on mute. Yeah. Her articles have appeared in national newspapers like the Times of India, the Indian Express, the Sunday Observer, and the Economic Times, as well as magazines like Femina, Global Gujarati, Go Air Flight, and so on. We are pleased to have Dr. Nila Yagnik, who is on the editorial board of Innovate Journal of the Online Education of the Fisher School of Education of the Nova Southern University, Florida, USA. And He's also the editorial board of the Ames International Journal of Management, Texas, USA. Dr. Yarnik is a PhD in Management Studies in NMIMS, a Master of Science Technology from the Bill Institute of Technology and Science Pilani and Master of Management Services Studies from NMIMS. And he was awarded the NMIMS Best Faculty Award for the year 2002 and 3. We decided to dedicate this edition to those who helped make the newspaper industry a well-oiled machine, the vendors and the hawkers. To acknowledge the immense contribution, the first year students have made a documentary which is known as Between the Lines and now I would like to pass on the baton to Sujasha Paul to talk about it. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. This is Sujasha Paul. Whether it is raining during the monsoon or whether it is freezing cold during the winter, the hawkers ensure that you have your newspaper in your hand with your tea in the morning. They ensure that you get a head start for a perfect day. The documentary made by us will showcase the arduous efforts of these hawkers and their daily routines. They get up early in the morning every day, so you get your copy of newspaper before you wake up. Through this documentary, we get to share with all of you the story of Nilesh Bhai, a differently abled hawker, and Pooja Parikh, the only female hawker of Vadodara. We sincerely admire the hard work they undergo and we wish to motivate them further. Now, let's have a look at this much anticipated documentary. We present to you Between the Lines. The morning, it brings the daily newspaper, something every household eagerly looks forward to. The news is consumed alongside breakfast without a single thought wasted on how the paper even comes to be. A fleeting thought might give you due consideration to the reporters, editors, designers or publishers. But one key link always goes unappreciated. The humble newspaper hawker. Paper hawkers start the routine at sharp 2 a.m. in the morning. This newspaper gets printed till 1.30 a.m.
later transported to a school in Raipur area. The intermediary sit and add coupons from which they don't make much more than 150 rupees. The distribution works on the principle of first come, first serve. The newspapers in the chain are given to the hawkers according to the preference noted by the agents. As soon as the paper is handed over to the hawkers, they get right to work, shifting and sorting through them, making neat little piles of newspaper. The papers are either rolled, tied or folded neatly depending whether they are required to toss up to a floor or laid down by the doorstep. At around 4 in the morning, once they have sorted through the papers, they load it onto their scooters and set off back for home. Once freshened up, they leave for their work. It is now about 5 in the morning as they whisk through the still asleep city, navigating and smartly delivering the day's much anticipated news to its readers. The mode of transport depends on the one who is delivering, as some choose to ride scooters, others simply can't afford it, so they have to rely on their bicycles. While some have their own means of transportation, Others simply rely on few people to whom delivery work is further delegated. Their work wraps up just as the city starts to awaken. But for most of the hawkers, the day's toil is far from over. They need some second source of income, as earning mere 30 to 33 percent per newspaper won't meet their daily needs. Most gear up and set off for the next task of the day. Life of a newspaper hawker is sheer hardship. Nevertheless, there are some that have truly transcended the boundaries of challenges in spite of the adversities in their life. Let us have a look at a couple of examples.
disability is not a hurdle if you have the will power to face it elish bhai a hard core hawker has proved it he has been delivering the newspaper against all odds मेरे पापा सीढ़ी पे से गिर गए थे उसको ब्रेन हेमरेज हो गया था उसके बाद पूरा धंधा मेरे संभाल चार बजे उठते हम राव पूरा पेपर लेने जाते पेपर लेके इकट्ठा करके सब जगह बांटने जाते हैं साढ़े छः सात बजे तक चलते हैं डेढ़ सौ घर में पेपर डालती हूँ पहले हार्ड वर्क लगता था फिर अभी अच्छा हो गया था मेरे साथ जिम्मेदारी होती तो काम तो करना ही पड़ेगा soul of storm and freedom of wind she has eyes like stars with strength of the sea pooja a common girl today has now become an inspiration for many that girl can do same job as boys can working for 16 hours a day She is bold. She is fearless. But she is responsible too. Life as a newspaper hawker is a life of anonymity. A thankless job's effects are further resonated in lack of income, something the newspaper hawker is no stranger to. The endeavors of this individual and shed light on their unique journeys it might not be a favorable line of work but this is the one which they perform with the great elegance we salute to this men and women without whom a life would just be a blank page the exemplary hard work of these hawkers dr nilay yagnik and the management wanted to felicitate nilesh bhai dabekar and pooja parik i would now request pranshu to play the video of the felicitation ceremony done by the editorial team of the campus observer kar 
para aqui um ajeitamento de... is a product of concerted efforts of the second year students and as a result of a significant effort support from the faculty members at Navrashna University the publication of the newspaper would not be possible without the guidance and constant support from our assist from our mentor assistant professor Mr. Uh, Mr. Hitrat Pandya I would now like Sarvesh Kadam Parts Nehi and Tanmay Vaswani to delineate their journey and share their experience with us Hello everyone, I'm Sarvesh Kadam uh, from second year. Uh, yeah, uh, my uh, experience was uh, like last year was very fruitful because I enjoy making this newspaper and working on it. Uh, it's uh, very much fun. But uh, as compared to last year, it was quite difficult due to everything going virtual and online as we had uh, difficulties in contacting our sources through virtual mediums, sometimes they didn't respond, sometimes it was difficult uh, connecting with them. So yeah, it was uh, in that way, it was very, diffi uh, very difficult than last time. Uh, if I talk about layout on the aspect that I was... this time and because uh, uh, making changes in newspaper virtually uh, took a lot of time as compared to when they were physically there as we used to stay back and have fun and made made that newspaper together which was very fruitful experience but yeah definitely we tried our best in this current situation and made the paper as good as we can thank you over to you Gurpal Thank you, Suresh. Uh, 
uh, I would start with thanking everyone who are present here for the event of the launch of Campus Observer. I won't say that uh, it was a roller coaster ride for preparing the second issue of Campus Observer, but rather I would name as it was a it was a car drive, and it was a race against time and the other fellow cars which are going in the same direction. So we have to somehow not bump into the traffic and reach the finish line before the time kills us. And there are many learning experience from this. So uh, I would have, uh, I did not know that how we would uh, edit the newspaper and will uh, uh, compile everything and present it like this because uh, last year we have did it manually means uh, we had the newspaper in our hand for the cop editing or the proofreading part or we were sitting next to each other while layout was being designed. But this time it was means, yes, it was difficult, but it also made me learn a few things that how to do that thing online uh, in the virtual world, even if you are not sitting next to next to each other. So yes, that is all that I wanted to say. And thank you everyone. Over to you, Tanu. <clears throat> yes, first of all, Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of this event that we are releasing uh, the newspaper made by us. So I would like to tell you all that uh, it is believed that when where one story ends, the other begins. And the same thing happened with us while we had completed and released the first issue of the Campus Observer while we were in the first semester uh, in November of 2019. Hitatsa threw a pizza party and he took us all to Inti Pizzeria to celebrate uh, the success of our newspaper, the members of the core team. And there he told us that now we would have to pass pass on our learnings to those who are not a part of the core team. But the newspaper back then and also in this issue was made by the class as a, as a team, as a whole. And uh, everyone, had con uh, everyone had something to contribute. And uh, whether it is just a story, whether it is photographs or whether it is writing a news series. So everyone did that, uh, did play their part very well, I would like to say. Uh, I My role was as the editor-in-chief, but uh, I believe that the word editor-in-chief and my name don't go together very well because I didn't do it because I wanted to become the editor-in-chief. But what happened was that actually there was another team. Uh, we had voted uh, uh, and we had made a new core team who would be working on this newspaper this semester. But then uh, at a point of time, we felt that things weren't going in, direct, in the direction we wanted them to. So Parth and Sarvesh raised the concerns at the right point of time and through Hitatsa's guidance, uh, uh, the core team had to change, but yet everyone played their role very well, whether it was the uh, older core team or whether it was us. And this, uh, in the making of this newspaper also helped me realize uh, how I am when I'm put in a leadership role that I am the kind of a leader who would, uh, if a team, if my, if some member of my team is not doing his job properly, I'm the kind of the leader who would then do his job for him rather than putting him in his place and uh, making him do what he's supposed to do. So I think this was a very fruitful learning experience. And yes, we have faced all the problems that Parth and Sarvesh, uh, Sarvesh shared with us. It was a fruitful learning experience because it was not a learning experience only for us, the students of journalism and mass communication program, or our mentor, assistant professor, Mr. Hitad Pandya, but also for the university as a whole. Uh, since we went to the sources, uh, sometimes we didn't get the answer we required as inputs to write in our story. But then over a period of time, since we had contacted with the same sources, but this time in a virtual setting, uh, everyone, I'm sure the faculty members also got to learn and uh, get to know uh, and got to know how to interact with media persons. So in future, whenever their school or their department achieves something which is exceptional and when we have uh, media uh, and editors from the uh, outside world, from outside the campus interacting with them, they would know how to interact with the media person. And uh, as a whole, I think the newspaper came out pretty well. And that was uh, my experience. So thank you so much. And I would like to thank all of you once again. And I would also like to thank Hitat sir for giving me the opportunity and for giving us, our class, this opportunity. 
some of us did take it as an assignment because this uh, this is a graded assignment in our course but then we are also thankful that we get to do such practical assignments in our course so thank you so much once again and yes that was my experience thank you sir vish patan tanmay for your experience and your grateful venture i would now request dr nela yagnik to release the campus observer thank you um actually a few months ago um you know there was because i have seen almost all universities have a nice newsletter either physical or digital so a few months ago this was before the lockdown we had a discussion and we said why don't we come out with a newsletter and professor hitab took it upon him and uh, had a wonderful uh, newsletter brought out this was uh, before the lockdown then the lockdown happened and uh, we had a uh, certain uh, issues with respect to preparing this newsletter but once uh, you know we started coming back to the campus that is all the faculty all of us faculty the students are still at home but the faculty uh, then we started brainstorming and we thought that there was so much we did during the lockdown also uh, over the last 5 6 months there's so many activities that our university has done why don't we collect that and report that and come out with a newsletter so these are international collaborations with universities international collaborations with some of the world's leading companies uh collaborations with indian companies um several new initiatives like the setting up of a maker space and a maker lab uh we are going to come out with a robotics lab uh as well so several initiatives are there across schools and uh, what we thought is let us collect all this together and uh, you know let us publish it and the journalism students uh, mentored by professor hitarth pandya took the initiative and uh, they've come out with a wonderful newsletter which i thought i'll just share with all of you today uh, this is the campus newsletter uh, the uh, the navrachna university campus newsletter called the campus observer so congratulations to all of you faculty staff students primarily it's your initiative and uh, my best wishes to all of you let's make this a regular event let's make this particular newsletter a regular uh, program and uh, i really like the uh, layout and um, uh, all the photographs that have come in the text is very nice it's very informative and um, uh my hearty congratulations to all of you once again all the best thank you so much sir now moving towards the panel discussion with our renowned editors from various publications the moderator for the same is tanmay vaswani over to you tanmay yeah so first of all i would like to welcome all all our guests and thank you so much for being here now i would like to now i would like to introduce uh, those who have joined late uh, now i would like to introduce our guests to those who have joined late first we have mr ajay umar editor in chief of gujarat gujarat samay one of the leading dailies in gujarat since more than 6 years now is known for his investigative and political reporting mr umar has also worked as a senior editor at the times of india state editor at divya bhaskar and senior editor at gujarat samachar a second our second panelist for today is mr ketan trivedi who is the editor of chitra lekha digital he is also in charge of chitra lekha's new De new delhi national P political bureau and in overall experience of nearly 20 years in journalism he has extensively covered political and current affairs social and environmental issues our third panelist for the day is mr ankur jain who is working with bbc worldwide as service editor for bbc news gujarat Previously, he has worked with the Times of India, Sandesh, the Indian Express, and NDTV in different roles. Our fourth panelist for the day is Mr. Presley Thomas, who is the crime and legal editor at the Hindustan Times, Mumbai. He has extensively covered crime and legal news for the publication, and prior to that, he was with leading national dailies like DNA and the Times of India. Now, I would like to tell you all that the topic for our panel discussion is the future of print media, authentic authenticity. and role of print media as compared to electronic media being social media or television 
now i would like to tell all the panelists that i'll invite you to give your views and opinions one by one and if you would like to add to each other's point you can do that as well after that we'll have a question and answer session for the audience so now first i would like to invite mr ketan trivedi to share his views on our topic sir uh, you are on mute sir hello can you hear me yes sir ha ketan okay nice sir yes uh, first of all thank you very much thank you itar for uh, uh, connecting me to baroda again uh, and uh, first of all congratulations to all it's a very uh, beautiful uh, newspaper especially i like the uh, photo feature that you have been in last pages so once again congratulations uh, to all and itar incidentally uh, my uh, first encounter in baroda when i was transferred from bhavnagar to baroda in gujarat samachar was with hawkers ajay bhai knows it that uh, in those days uh, uh, fighting uh, with uh, uh, sandesh and gujarat samachar in fighting was going on and uh, both the party used to disturb uh, hawkers at the night so we after finishing uh, newspaper edition we were asked to go to samrat hotel at station and uh, <laughs> ensure with that with sevusal uh, with sevusal <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh, that uh, uh, documentary reminded me anyway tanmay what uh, have you asked about uh, uh, future of print uh, let me be very clear i firmly believe that uh, print will exist uh, no doubt about it uh, though i am working in the digital medium now i firmly believe that print will exist because you know uh, there has been uh, uh, 240 years uh, uh, when the bengal gazette started in 1780 it has been almost 240 years in print uh, journalism in india right and print still exists and still cherishing well if we uh, compare with electronic media uh, almost in mid 90s i think uh, the private news channel uh, started so it has been almost uh, three and half decade uh, to electronic media electronic news channel forget doordarshan national television uh, uh, if we consider only uh, private news channels so though the medium itself is a very powerful the players have killed journalism in electronic media today electronic uh, journalism in electronic media yeah. is killed and uh, that recent trp scam and all that uh, have endorsed it that there is no journalism at all in the uh, everyone knows it uh, be, uh, what they are doing and uh, since we are in the industry we know it well we uh, this, this is something else this is not journalism at all of course uh, digital is blooming and digital uh, is growing very fast but while advocating digital uh, with the numbers uh, we should not forget uh, or we should not uh, ignore the rural uh, readership and the rural penetration of uh, print uh, penetration of print in the rural areas because our rural reader still uh, depend on uh, print they still believe print and you know uh, of course uh, social media and digital is breaking the news these days uh, uh, presley was rightly discussing when we are casually uh, discussing that uh, it will the scenario of print will change of course print will not be exist in the same form that is existing today it will change but uh, it will be more interpretative it will be you know uh, today we all watch ipl we all know uh, score uh, ball to ball score yet we love to read we love to read commentary in next day's newspaper uh, we love to uh, read the interpretation uh, in next day's newspaper so somehow uh, i believe that uh, by all these reasons because it has a shelf life uh, television and uh, all other medium has a very short uh, self life while compared to print so print uh, with all these changes will exist and will flourish tanmay thank you sir now i would invite presley sir to uh, share his views with us okay uh, 
I would straight away like uh, both go for the topic. Uh, the thing is this: uh, any newspaper organization that is there existing in the country runs the paper based down on on the revenues that it gathers. The revenue is gathered for a newspaper comes from the advertisements. The advertisements. essentially like so all your advertisers place your advertisements into a newspaper because they are dished out in a physical form to every household right so there were there were studies which said that the advertisements would move to web and things like that but um while there are enough of advertisements but i don't see it getting the kind of revenue that it possibly should have or could have generated the reasons for which are still not known so in that aspect print is going to stay there is no doubt about it because there is no other option for uh, uh the 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 person who runs a newspaper to you know get away from print in that sense uh apart from that if you look at it from the editorial perspective uh social media uh when you look at it see i have gone through a period when we didn't have twitter or facebook or you know any of those things any of the platforms uh there to put out news or to consume news google was a late entrant in that sense if you look at it um but when you look at it after possibly in the last 5 years or or let's say uh, in the last last about yeah 5 to 10 years if you look at last decade actually the number of uh, mediums uh through social media not only through the websites <clears throat> but also through your uh um uh, you know online online newspapers that have come across that have come come and established themselves and a lot many of the blogs and vlogs that have started it definitely is going to have its own you know stay in the market as as you say but print with any reputed uh, newspaper news channel or whatever medium which has which has been there since ages is going to be the mainstay of journalism in any case that is how it's going to be because as i said earlier like as kevin also said the form in which newspapers possibly were delivered delivered 15 20 years back or wherein you relied on a newspaper to know what happened xyz in the world that is going to completely change with the social me- social media coming because every minute on twitter or on facebook you have updates that are constantly coming that that's just, that's not the same update that you want to read in the next next day's newspaper so your newspaper will provide you an will provide you the analysis behind possibly an event that is happening for example uh, the china's invasion on uh, invasion or what do you call in, inside coming into ladakh or whatever so you might have a social media saying that the social media might say within seconds saying that this is what happened but, but you will have to go back to a newspaper and read a guy who knows about the issue and knows about has experienced the entire thing to tell you in detail of the entire happenings over there and what you what you what you can possibly look out for so these are the these are the basic structures of um, putting out news in that terms are so uh, the existence of print cannot be challenged though there are many who try and challenge it there are many papers which challenge it but in reality i don't think it's going to go off as of now not at least like i cannot see it for the next decade or two that print is going to go away that's for sure back to yes sir yes sir so would you like to add something sorry i i cut you no. off no thanks thank you sir now i would request ajay sir to share his views with us good afternoon everybody tejal ben dr nilay my friend hitar pandya we have worked together in times of india group uh, and we still remember 
hitarth you will have to host me a pizza party huh? your students are telling me that uh, you are a good host and in mirror we used to learn when you left that you know there was a grand party so congratulations to all the student i i would like to appreciate vrsali sujasa muskan then parth uh, uh, sarves uh, then i am sorry if i am missing some of the names and uh, good afternoon to my fellow panelist ketan is a very dear friend and we have rubbed shoulder together in gujarat samachar and uh, also in many platforms and you are part of chitralekha sir and i am part of chitralekha <laughs> i am sunil of chitralekha you can call me uh, mr thomas uh, and ankur we have worked together in times of india we had a good time now he is with bbc so tejal ben uh, when i joined you know tejal ben was uh, asking about the future of print media and ma'am you know uh, almost before 10 years uh, that was 2010 i was in daos and uh, work in uh, just i had gone there to cover world economic forum and there an israeli journalist asked this question to the publisher of new york times that sir uh, what would be the future of print media whether because uh, in the first week of january i think if my memory is not joking with me the economist has written an obituary for print media and they said that you know digital would be the future so in light of that uh, you know article an israeli journalist asked this question to the publisher of new york times and that answer that you know i would still remember uh, he said that uh, i am not bothered you know whether print would survive or not he said when eyeballs would shift from print to electronic when eyeballs would shift from print to electronic my advertisers would also shift from print to electronic and it would be a very very advantageous position for any publisher if you know i have to shift from print to digital because you know when i was watching this documentary you know a hawker whether he is without investing a single paisa you know he is my 33% partner you know a newspaper which you receive at the cost of rupees 4 you know a hawker is getting 1 rupee 33 paisa every day every day he is getting 1 rupee 33 paisa per copy you know whereas the production cost of a newspaper is not less than 9 to 10 rupees if it is you know 16 page newspaper plus you know minimum four uh, broadsheet supplement it would cost you minimum 9 to 10 rupees whereas you know we are selling it in 4 rupees and out of that 4 rupees you know 1 rupee 33 paisa net in some cases you know he gets 1 rupee 66 paisa also if there is no distribution uh, uh, commission in between so he is partner of partner in profit you know so newspaper hawker is getting you know 1 rupee 33 paisa then this publisher of new york times said that you know i have to invest in real estate for having a print establishment i have to invest in you know printing machinery i have to invest in newsprint i have to invest in you know uh, ink and logistic also to take it from printing press to the uh, center like you know panjra pol or other centers or the ketan trivedi was mentioning you know just opposite to railway station in baroda you know all of you must have seen that baroda railway station just opposite to baroda railway station all hawkers would come and meet there to distribute newspaper so publisher of news new york times said that you know i am not bothered whether people read my uh, paper on print or digital i will get more profit because in that case i have to pay only for uh, human intellectual property rights that is you know for the writing i have to pay i need not have to pay for ink for printing machinery for you know real estate for digital and for electric electricity charge or labor laws you know i need not have to follow all this thing but having said this you know he also said that the biggest challenge before an editor and which i realized today you know after my experience of 30 35 years that biggest challenge for an editor today is you know how to bridge uh, this gap between digitally immigrant and digitally native for example tejal ben and me you know uh, we may be digitally immigrant because we you know we born in an era of you know diode triode tetrode pentode transistor then came you know chips and microchips okay whereas you know this rusali and sujasa and hitarth pandya and others you know they came in an era of blackberry then you know uh, 
uh, iPhone and iPod and AirPods now. Okay. So the biggest challenge for an editor is to bridge a gap between digitally immigrant and digitally native persons. That is the biggest challenge. Second thing, as you know, Ketan was saying, you know, that uh, newspaper uh, would survive or not. I'm sure as other speakers have said that, you know, newspaper would definitely sur survive because, you know, newspaper in India, it is the most successful communication innovation which has survived for more than 240 years. Mumbai Samachar, in case of Gujarati journalism, you know, it is the oldest newspaper which has crossed almost, they are celebrating their 200th year. Indian cinema has completed 154 years. The private channels have completed 30 plus years, you know, 32 or 33. Internet in India has completed almost 28 years. Mobile technology has completed 26 years. Private uh, FM channels has completed 18 years. Now, question is, where are we heading? From the era of Gutenberg, Gutenberg, when I say the man who has invent, invented printing press. Printing press. Yeah. From the era of Gutenberg to Mark Zuckerberg. From area of Gutenberg to Mark Zuckerberg, the inventor of Facebook and WhatsApp. And we all are, most of us have become students of WhatsApp University also. I'll be coming back to the fake news later on. But from the era of, you know, Gutenberg to Zuckerberg, from the era of, you know, uh, textbook to Facebook. Hmm? When we were students, you know, we were amazed to see a radio having, uh, you know, and keeping an aerial outside our house. And every time, you know, whenever there is some problem of listening to commentary, we will go and adjust that, you know, aerial. Okay. Which this generation of Brusali or Sujasa or Muskan or Tanmay or Parth may not have heard of it, you know. We have seen gramophone, we have seen tape recorders, we have seen CD, DVD, pen drive, and you are living in an era of, you know, iCloud. We have seen STD, PCO, cable, satellite, you are a generation of Netflix. So the point I am making in an era, you know, we, where we are seeing, you know, democratization of media. I'm just giving an example. Hitarth, in last six months, I was reading the other day, uh, media report. They said that, you know, traditional book publishers are publishing three lakh books in an year, whereas, you know, after lockdown in Corona, 10 lakh books were published by non-traditional publishers. We are having 900 channels today. When we started our career, there were only two channels. After DD, <laughs> Durdasar, you know, there were only two channels like GTV and NDTV. Now, today, we see over 900 channels. There are nine crore websites, you know, added every year every minute you know young boys uh, they are uploading more than 100 hours of video on youtube you will find you know 50 lakh stories uploaded on facebook every hour more than 5 lakh photos you will find uploaded on instagram every hour the point i am making is that you know when you in last uh, from after the first crisis adc we call it you know, from the ADC 002 2003, there is one study of Columbia University which says that, you know, whatever human life has produced in form of print, you know, if you keep it uh, uh, in the form of, uh, you know, data management, it would be 5 billion billion, you know, gigabyte or 5 exabytes. From 2011, if you uh, continue the same study, which says that, you know, uh, humanity have added five exabyte data every second day. Now imagine what kind of data that, you know, we are producing. So imagine the journey, you know, when we started our career from two newspaper and four channels to today, you know, 900 plus channels in, and, you know, 52,000 newspapers. So the problem is how would you get noticed? Okay. How would you get noticed? Because, you know, you are living on an information superhighway. You are living in an information of superhighway. And that is the reason, you know, I see that why print media would survive. Because print media would survive because of its credibility. Print media would survive because of its authenticity. Because there is no way, you know, whatever you have seen on WhatsApp messages or on Facebook, 
there is no way to confirm whether the story is right or wrong you know as mr thomas has said you know ke on social media you will find lot of things but to find out whether it is truth or not for fact check you need to read newspapers when i was in america and you know we had gone to wall street journal uh, our mentor has taught us two things you know that suppose in digital media some news has broken he said ask two things so what and what next so as mr thomas has rightly said you know why people would read newspaper people would read newspaper next day for checking the authenticity of news for checking the credibility of news then they would like to read analysis whether you know uh, if mr xi jinping is telling his troops that be prepared for war what does it mean i distinctly remember on 6th of august 2019 when uh, in indian parliament on 5th august mr amit sa our home minister has said that you know ladakh is part of india and we are declaring ladakh as you know union territory today and he said you know they have abolished 370 and 35 a in parliament on 6th of august next day china has given only one line of statement that this is unacceptable ladakh is unacceptable to us and nobody noticed that statement but i read an analysis in wall street journal which says that you know when china says that this is not unaccept this is not acceptable to us means you know i can see a war opportunity and at that time you know i was wondering that you know why this defense correspondent of you know who is taking care of uh, south asian beat uh, sitting in washington is writing this after one year i realized that you know what he said on 6th of august came true on 6th of october when china made a statement that we don't accept uh, uh, ladakh as union territory declared by government of india and that has come out as root cause of uh, the whole uh, um, stalemate which is continuing uh, at the borders between uh, india and china and today you know we can see tension at 7000 kilometers boundary between india china myanmar pakistan and bangladesh so newspaper is for analysis newspaper is for in- interpretation newspaper is for getting good human interest story newspaper is for getting you know first person singular account newspaper is for getting a very good investigative story with perspective newspaper is the most responsible format of journalism where you will find authenticity and credibility i would conclude with only one sentence you know in mahabharata yudhishthir spoke half truth only once in the name of uh, you know uh, narova or kunjrova hmm? when dronacharya asked him ke aswatthama hanayo ene kahu ke narova kunjrova and uh, ketan uh, if you read that mythology story you know the chariot of uh, king yudhishthir which was you know uh, keeping four was down ha four feet away from the earth you know fell down at the same moment so for newspaper or for print media i have the only quality with which you know i am surviving or with my unique selling proposition is my credibility and print media would survive till it would maintain its credibility authenticity if you don't uh, maintain your credibility or authenticity people would boycott you also so tejal ben i hope that i have answered your question thank you thank you very much i would like to take more questions at the time of panel discussion thank you thank you sir now moving on to ankur sir so hello all thank you thank you for getting me here um, before i begin answering the question i like to congratulate every one of you every student who has been part of this newspaper um and it is it has been in times of corona i can only imagine how difficult this must have been for all of you to go out chase stories even do that documentary talking to people life in mask and that pp kit is not easy and especially going out and talking to people risking there's a little bit of risk involved every time you move out of your house uh, so phenomenal job uh, job uh, students i think print will survive because of guys like you at least five or 10 students of of this batch of the two years students that you are Uh, uh, try to become a journalist or dream to become a journalist print is here to stay uh, to uh, to answer the question i think 
the question really is should print survive um, uh, because it's difficult to predict uh, uh, a medium as large as print uh, uh, history has it that mediums as strong as print radio tv uh, they don't die they transform uh, they are immortal in a way that they how, how they are born as a medium immortality comes with it but uh, the real question that we as journalists and what ajay bhai uh, ketan bhai and presley have been saying and uh, that should print survive and the answer lies yes print should survive and why it would survive it looks like it's difficult to predict is that there's a huge surge uh, which ketan ketan bhai briefly t- touched upon is, is the vernacular uh, newspapers i think english uh, newspapers uh, do have certain difficulty when it comes to uh, the, the print business it's difficult for them to operate in this environment for the, but for the vernacular i think the future the future seems really bright for them because especially especially if you see that every year the number of indians that that get added up to the indian middle class these are people who come from uh, uh, from smaller towns villages who move to cities there's a certain degree of aspiration and newspapers reflect your aspiration your state your day starts with the newspaper that you have in your table in the house it speaks about you uh in an indian market is lot different than than compared to lot of print markets globally because here newspaper is not just a piece of information uh it's part part of our household uh, it's it's part of a culture it's a habit that we have inculcated most of us who have who have who are born after 80s have seen our 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 grandparents our parents watching uh, reading this newspapers we've inculcated this as a habit this is something which been told like your parents would ask a youngster to stay away from mobile not do this digital business the whole day but would would urge them to read a newspaper you know you will gain something if you read the even if you're reading the same story on digital there is a certain mindset that if you read it on newspaper you will gain more so i think newspapers are here to stay but why should they stay and the precise reason i i, I completely agree with ajay bhai uh, the biggest uh, and I, i i feel this very strongly the worst thing that has happened to journalism is breaking news uh, uh, it's it's not actually breaking with a e it's breaking with a a because we are actually breaking news journalists need to get some time before the report on this this surge of, of telling a story the moment you heard of it uh, i think is the biggest challenge that we all are, all of us as journalists are facing a newsroom because that is damning our credibility be it digital or news channel i think we are the worst uh, compared to the print we need to have certain time it's not possible for a journalist like me or anyone who's who spent um, certain number of years to be an expert in every field that we report on to be expert on crime politics to be an expert on uh, on on everything that happens during the day we need we need to do certain homework before we go out and tell audience that this is something that has happened we need to understand we need to process that information and that's why i think print is a unique combination where it gives you an opportunity to stay on that news for a while uh, to to be on that news understand that news before you tell your audience uh, so print should stay uh, but definitely as presley was saying not it's in current form because if you see traditionally um, print newspapers how they started in india and if, even if we even if we take the history around our independence and before uh, this was more of an activism people who started out newspapers they wanted to challenge what was happening around them uh, it was it was not a business per se they 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 had a voice they thought that they have a voice which is different and a voice and an opinion which is different from the majority of that time in their area in their village city or state or the country for that matter and they wanted to establish and bring what they think is right and go ahead with it but as times change and times change always a uh, uh, newspaper became a business it became a cash cow it became a, a business that gave good money to publishers and there's nothing wrong in it because as long as people who run this uh, print business if they don't earn out of it it's difficult for them to survive but uh, post liberalization this industry uh, saw sea change and uh, media houses who were involved in print for them print was their core business but then they diversified themselves into different business where print wasn't their core they were not depending on print uh, uh to, to to for them to survive prestige in that print newspaper that if i am running a newspaper how how credible is my newspaper and how good or bad that newspaper is that value that uh, publishers used to attach to newspaper that value started redefining itself uh, and that brought a sea change and today uh, running a print operation ajay bhai uh, is a, is a veteran here bro, who knows is very difficult is very difficult to run a print operation so uh, newspapers survival is definitely there's a big question mark but there's a there's a big dark hole if youngsters like uh, uh, in this college or otherwise 
uh, other journalism schools think of print as a future, uh, which uh, which Hitar would know and everybody else who's going to communication schools would understand. Uh, not many communication students these days want to be print journalists. Uh, there's a huge dirt. Um, all the editors here who, who deal with print news, they know it that getting young talent is a difficulty. Uh, salaries in newspapers are becoming at sorry, and the unpredictability Corona has thrown at print news. I think the biggest if there's two big uh, victims of Corona, one is education, another is the print industry. Uh, it's it's getting day and day difficult for them to pay their journalists. It's getting difficult to survive to run their operations. Uh, so in post-Corona world, yes, print should survive, but it looks very difficult, for, especially for English. But I think vernacular, they have a phenomenal future ahead. Uh, cities are getting more urbanized, even if we, even if we look Gujarat or beyond. Uh, there are more people coming from these periphery towns to cities, and for them, these newspapers is something that they carry along with them is the newspapers that that keeps them part of where they belong uh, so it's here to stay uh, but it it is it is under major transform credibility is the big question here um, also also one thing that uh, uh, we will will discuss more but hitart also mentioned uh, to me that i should also comment a little bit on the newspaper and as editor if even if everything is right i i don't get paid for my job if not i don't mention certain things because that's that, that's what the editor's job is so i think it's a it's a phenomenal newspaper guys um uh, i have i have been part of um, my college magazine for 3 years and uh, and reading this brought me back those memories and the difficulties the difference of opinions you know um, uh, every journalist here itart uh, presley ajay bhai ketan bhai know how difficult it is to have have a consensus in a newsroom it's very difficult you can never have the consensus in the end the editor says ki okay this is what i think is right and just do it so uh, so great job uh, and as journalist i think print digital tv what we need and what uh, what what is the biggest asset that can survive you sail through you can swim through this whole phenomenon of uh, phenomenal thing which is journalism is the two s which i call and which always stay with me first s you should always keep with you and the second s you should not first s is the sensitivity and i think the fact that um, from your front page to your back page i can see everybody was involved with the students knew they are they are sensitive they didn't turn a blind eye to what they see around them and that is what a journalist is that every day when i drive from my home to office i see thousand stories because i am not blind to the issues ha being sensitive not being emotional fools about it but being sensitive and raising those issues i think that sensitivity is very important and the second s is the stereotype this is where well where, where all we all need to work because i think and this is very difficult um we at bbc often do this exercise uh, uh, of throwing out the biases and stereotypes within us uh, this is an exercise that this is something that i was always conscious that i was in journalism not in bbc but before bbc as well uh, like to just to point you an example and not going in detail about it like you have a story on uh, uh, the sports returning back to the campus and stuff uh, no pictures or no quote or nothing in that story mentions women you know now now this is how we see the world when we think of sports we always think of men which is very simple uh, because that's how we have grown up in our in our societies in our schools the grounds are being dominated by boys uh, but then this is a stereotype uh, i think if you see india's history in the last 30 years women have brought more medals to india than men have uh, uh, women have used sports uh, for a voice of change so these are small little stereotypes that we as communication students should be very aware when we are when we are doing our when we are doing any material be it a newspaper channel or digital so best of luck guys i i see great potential um, in this uh, looking at this newspapers you guys have a bright future and i really really hope that at least um, 10% of uh, of those in this batch uh, become a journalist so thank you thank you so much sir and now we'll uh we are open for question the question and answer session so whoever from the audience would like to ask any question uh may please do that and i also will now switch off my moderator mode and my i will switch on my student mode so that i can also interact with you and ask you questions i so guess, would like uh, uh, I, guess I will take it for from here tanmay since you said that you want to be a student now <laughs> uh, yes, sir, yes. you can ask you can ask the question So, so should i start or would someone else would like to ask me for me you can set the ball rolling okay okay so thank you so so uh, my question to all of you is that uh, how do you think have the headlines changed as compared to digital because when we uh, research uh, when we search something on google there are uh, there is a news section on google and there are too many articles on it from times of india from various other digital uh, websites 
but the headlines of those I feel are very clickbaity. They are not about what the uh, and they sensationalize what the actual topic is about, especially when it is about uh, when it is related to either a coronavirus vaccine, which I have seen generally that uh, they always uh, either dampen the hope of people or they always uh, you know uh, they are overly optimistic. And uh, and sometimes also I've seen these in articles related to celebrities as well. So how do you think uh, have the headlines in print have changed over a period of time ever since digital has started doing this thing? I guess um, uh, both uh, Ankur and uh, uh, Ajay, I mean, all four of you have the right, different times, answers for this because Ketan writes different headline, Ankur writes different headline, and Presley and Ajay Bhai would like uh, you know write different headlines. Uh, uh, I would say, say like, you know, uh, yes, uh, what has happened with social media coming in especially, uh, is that the amount of volume that it creates uh, in terms of one new story is enormous. So there is definitely a fight to make your headlines catchier, quirkier, which will possibly, you know, get eyeballs. So in that sense, there there is a set pattern wherein you are giving out such kind of, you know, quirky headlines, headlines which might not be the actual content of the story, that happens. But there is a clear differentiation when it gets to print. Print will not carry the headline that that has been put online of yes, the sir. same story. Okay, so there are two things to it. Whatever the head, whatever the story that has been put out on social media on on the newspaper's website or on the Twitter account or whatever it is, you won't find the same replica of that in the newspaper the next morning. You will not have the same, you know, uh, headline or the content for that matter. So in that sense, there is a differentiation. While while as I said, there in this entire you know, a uh, humongous amount of traffic to catch eyeballs. People do obviously, you know, try and tweak their headlines, make it quirky, make it whatever, whatever they feel at that point in time could catch eyeballs. Yes, they do that. Yeah. So, come and on. another thing. Yeah, Jibai, please. Yeah. As he has rightly said, you know, catching eyeballs. Uh, take example of, you know, uh, a recent controversy of Susan Singh and you know media trials started on Reha Chakravarti as if you know from day one without verifying facts and anything you know I don't know from where this noise is coming somebody's mic is on I guess it's Sarvesh I guess it's Sarvesh Sarvesh uh, yeah thanks Sarvesh yeah so sometimes, you know, in channel, you will find sometimes in channel, you know, you will find a media trial, which I think, you know, activism is one good style of, you know, doing journalism that, you know, okay, somebody has killed somebody and, you know, you can do media trial. Now, in case of Hathras, you know, or in case of Nirbhaya, I can understand, you know, uh, you may do media trial that, you know, why culprits are not being caught and why police has, uh, you know, burned the dead body in the middle of the night and all this thing, you know, there it is okay that you do media activism. Yes. But, you know, from day one, you know, branding somebody that uh, see is culprit, you know, without having uh, proper evidences and, you know, uh, uh, casting aspersions on someone, I think it is not a good journalism. So sometimes some channels will do it with their own agenda to getting, to getting more eyeballs or more TRPs. They may do, you know, this kind of gimmicks. So my friend Radhish Sardesai will do something and Arnab Goswami will do something else. But, you know, a newspaper would never, never, never indulge, you know, in this kind of media trial. They will write facts, facts and facts only. And that is the reason, you know, I said that, you know, media, print media particularly, would always strictly adhere to its own credibility and uh, authenticity because, you know, as print media, I am very, very responsible. Recently, Supreme Court of India, you know, has taken cognizance of this development and they said that, you know, uh, a newspaper uh, 
is confined to prb act you know uh, as editor you know i am responsible if something goes wrong in my newspaper but whereas you know in newspaper channel or in facebook or in twitter or in social media you can do any kind of things so that is the reason that you know we need to have a guideline also that you know what kind of journalism you are doing we in print are very very responsible uh, as journalist and we always try to maintain you know our accountability responsibility credibility and authenticity and you know without which if you don't have consistency in your credibility you cannot survive as brand so news print print journalism has lot of responsibility Uh, that's what i wanted to add into what my friend has said i guess ankur has sailed in both the boats what would you say ankur so uh, so uh, it's it's an interesting question and and tanmay uh, for for a journalist i think uh, like if i speak of myself uh, apart from my girlfriend my food my wife now my son my job what i love the most and what i remember the most like the facebook throws a memory of 8 years back you were doing is the headlines you know uh, when i was a young young journalist i i used to wait <laughs> um uh, like get up in the morning at 6 o'clock and go to bs hospital just to see if the desk has not changed my headline because i was i was very attached to the headline if i have given this headline I have, and have they changed and, and god forbid if they have done something which i don't like i used to fight with them so headlines headlines are very intricate but but coming to say it we are not discussing clickbait because we all know clickbait is not something to discuss this is that is not journalism but every platform has a grammar like to give you an example what the way you would talk to hitat Uh, in your classroom and the way you talk to hitart in his house or at a pizza restaurant or on the campus changes you change environment so with medium uh, how you say things changes and that's the same reason why headlines of digital do not work with print i remember that when we used to give print headlines we used to not reveal much editors uh, even when i i used to uh, do stories or lead a team in print we used to not reveal much uh, when it came to print stories especially uh, stories which is which is in the lower part of the newspapers which are slightly featureish where we would want people to read headline get more curious and uh, read the story with digital and digital with the with the publishers like the mainstream publishers that we are discussing uh, we want to reveal what the story is about uh, because one it it helps you for seo the google works if you have the main keywords there what the story is about also people don't have time people would scroll down to another story if you don't tell them in like 3 seconds what the story is about so and to give you an example what ajay bhai was quoting you yes i think the biggest problem is is that how do you make your headlines credible and and that's why you need to verify authenticate like the sushant singh news happened when the news broke out uh, everybody in fact everyone ran this news uh, except a few publishers that sushant singh has committed a suicide uh, we didn't we didn't put that headline uh, the we we wrote that sushant singh found dead now there's a huge difference what what you were saying because right now we only know he was found dead it's for the police to verify and tell us that it has been a suicide just because he's found hanging we can't say anything so that's the difference between the authenticity but the nuances changes digital is digital headlines are a big challenge uh, you want to stand out as especially was saying print headlines that you can you can you are in your within space you can do little bit of wordplay and be happy with about it but digital you are not competing with how you say things digital you are competing with like on facebook my headline is competing with what uh, 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 guy like if you are a reader if suppose muskan is a bbc gujarati subscriber how she reads bbc gujarati on facebook she sees one story of bbc gujarati and another post by nile uh, by nile sir or by meera uh, saying that she checked into this this restaurant and nile sir mentioning this is a good piece to read now my headline is competing how how meera and nile talk to talk to uh, muskan on facebook now so i have to be a little bit of personal i have to i have to i have to not say how friends would talk but still my my headline has to reveal communicate in the way your friend or your peers communicate so it's digital headlines is altogether different challenge yes ankur uh, i would like to add here two uh, points uh, of course a headline changes when uh, platform changes digital uh, newsroom and uh, print but at the same time so far print is concerned i think every uh, uh, newsroom uh, print newsroom has its uh, own audience and while giving the headlines we have to uh, you know uh, take care of our audience what they like what they don't like and all that and this day you know this day telegraph is uh, uh, look at telegraph's uh, title every day look at times of india's title and look at the indian express uh, title 
Ajay Bhai rightly said about television news group that uh, there are other driving forces or they may have their own agenda. But so far, print is concerned. I think uh, our former editor, Hachitan Mehta, used to say in those days uh, that uh, when uh, newspaper, uh, your, uh, your work starts, ours is, ours is a magazine, so our work starts when newspaper finishes. These days, now television, uh, where te television finishes, newspaper uh, starts its work. Right, so uh, every platform or every uh, publication house has its own uh, core target audience. So uh, they keep their uh, audience and uh, their level of this, uh, their audience in mind. And accordingly, uh, they try to give headline. Thank you so much for your answers. Yeah, any other, any other students who want to ask anything? I mean, all of us are uh, free to ask questions. It's not that students don't yeah. Sometimes you as, uh, no, you know, as... Kitar, I think we have confused them sufficiently, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, I guess, uh, Tejal ma'am, uh, since, you know, uh, uh, you are with us since, uh, you know, beginning of this session, and we were sharing a lot of things before we actually started the session. Uh, I would, you know, request you to say, uh, I mean, how you as a as a chairperson, as a person who has been very friendly with media people and who has been, you know, understanding their issues and everything. Students at this end, they are also learning this new journey, and uh, you know, they would like to hear something from you. First of all, thank you for this uh, very good, uh, insightful <clears throat> session. Uh, my congratulations to the students for the film as well as for bringing out the Campus Chronicle and to you, Hitar, to Dr. Obi and all the faculty and students and to Nilay sir as well. And uh, my deep appreciation to all our four uh, very eminent panelists who have spent uh, you know, considerable part of their lives in uh, the field of journalism. And today they have shared very honestly and candidly their views on print media, future of print media, uh, the, the difficulties and challenges uh, that print media face, uh, faces, the history and the evolution of journalism, and now where it is moving. You know, Ajay Bhai, uh, Priestley, uh, Ketan Bhai, and Ankur, all four of you have given us tremendous amount of insight. I have uh, learned a lot today. And I'm sure our students have had the, you know, have will address issues related to the topics we've discussed uh, based on the insight they've gained. I personally feel that journalism uh, is a very, very important aspect of our lives. And now with the world becoming smaller in terms of, uh, you know, with what the internet has done, uh, the, the interest uh, and the concern what happens in one place versus another place has become manifold because we are impacted, our lives are impacted by what happens elsewhere as well. What happens not only in our immediate surroundings, surrounding, but all over the world as well. My other biggest concern is the authenticity part. And uh, that is an issue that uh, each one of us has to address for ourselves. There are, there are good, uh, there is good journalism, there is honest journalism, and there is uh, you know, commercial journalism or there is an opportunistic journalism. And uh, I would stress on you know, developing strength of character and your own personal values and your own personal ethics, which will guide you in your journey in journalism. We need more authentic news. We need news which are positive. I remember Divya Bhaskar, I don't know if they still do it, Ajay Bhai, did one day, one day in the week. It is I who started it. Yes, Ajay Bhai, well then, congratulations to you. Yeah. For starting one day in the week of only positive news. And thanks to Mr. Narendra Modi, you know, I had gone to meet Mr. Modi with my chairman. Uh, unfortunately, he is no more with us now, Mr. Ramesh Chandra Agarwal. And Mr. Modi said, Ramesji, every day you are publishing, you know, negative, negative, negative. At least once in a week, you know, you should publish some positive story. And I said, okay, sir, from next Monday, we will publish only positive stories. 
and i am happy that uh, i was there as editor in chief of, of baskar but they have continued the tradition which is a very good tradition so in those every early monday, days every monday you will find positive story correct but when when you started i used to read divya baskar on a monday specially because we you know while while human nature feeds on negativity and feeds on scandalous news i mean we are all like if you are talking eyeballs in the newspaper our first uh, you know we are eyeballs will be caught by something which is negative that i guess something in us there is some some sadistic trait in us which wants us to read something terrible about other people not about us but if we have to move away from there you know it's people like ajay bhai and others who took the bold step of bringing positivity and i think increased positivity increased uh, you know balanced news uh, makers and news making will make this world better and i think it is our responsibility i mean all of you students who are studying journalism carry the responsibility of making the world a better place for all of us yeah. for our future generation for our children because they will learn and they will do as we do and as we expose them whatever we expose them to so best wishes to everybody look into yourselves build your own values build strength of character you people will you your journalism will be determined by the people who who run the journalism world and your strength of character will see which way we go so thank you uh, hitarth for giving yeah. me an opportunity thank to you. share thank some you so ideas yeah. uh, nilay sir thanks uh, to all this all the panelists thank you so thank much you, nilay sir yeah. always uh, you know he always shares uh, you know very interesting aspects about journalists because uh, uh, you know his insights uh, though he is from the technical part of but i have always remember and i was always uh, you know observed that he comes up very good aspects about journalism sir this time also we would like to hear something new from you uh well my comments are that uh, you know uh, as i've said over the years uh, and as uh, when we started this session uh, we spoke about the kind of uh, quality of journalism which is needed and uh, i remember um, mr presley mentioned how uh, analysis is what is uh, going to be uh, the print for and not breaking news uh, so for breaking news we have a lot of these social networks and uh, tv and all that but for the analysis of that print will continue uh, to provide that and this is where i think you know my favorite word is going up the value chain Uh, i often use that word even in uh, for our university our university also needs to move up the value chain and go into post graduate programs research phd and so on uh, high quality stuff so uh, in the same way print journalism uh, as such also needs to move up the value chain and that when you see a print paper it should be a lot of analysis a lot of uh, opinions uh, which are based on facts which are based on research Uh, i remember many many years ago uh, you know um, uh, I, i lived in chennai and um, the main newspaper at, uh, in chennai at that time and i still think would be uh, even now is the hindu and um, i still remember the hindu and its head uh, you know its uh, headquarters we often used to pass by that building but we all used to read the hindu and the hindu was a paper which had such tremendous analysis uh, and there was one particular journalist i still remember where we would look up to him to read his uh, article it would be on politics it would be on economics it would be on such things um, his name is mr g k reddy and if you just google you you'll find so, i mean the kind of articles the kind of uh, depth that would go into his research uh, and the way he would communicate it was a learning not only in uh, the uh, way in which you do research but also in the english language it was so strong and so powerful his language you know it was that way so uh, such kind of thing similarly in radio journalism also i remember some excellent news readers uh, of yester years um, and um, uh, you know and even in print i remember many of them so i would request that our you know it is quite possible that we need to go back to our roots instead of the noise that you see now 
where everybody is working on TRP, uh, it might be more important to reach out to the serious reader as well and provide quality journalism. Uh, and, and, you know, anybody can, these days, uh, anybody, what is a citizen journalist today? You know, a citizen journalist is somebody, or you and I, we are on the street, we know something, we write a story on that. So uh, it is becoming increasingly, and I think this is where the journalists of tomorrow will face competition from, because anybody, strictly speaking, could uh, report something. But the quality of your journalism will be from your overall breadth of, it's truly interdisciplinary. Journalism as a discipline, journalism and mass communication, it's truly interdisciplinary. You have to know so many things to be able to apply your mind uh, over there. So I would request students of journalism to look at it from that perspective and always think at, uh, you know, how we can look at a problem from an interdisciplinary perspective and report uh, facts, you know, uh, not necessarily hyped up things for TRPs. So uh, that is uh, my uh, request as a, as, a, as a consumer of journalism. I'm not a journalist, but as a consumer of journalist, somebody who wants... Uh, journalism to happen, somebody who's interested in reading the paper or watching some good TV or reading a good article, uh, I I'm really looking forward to our students coming up and making such an impact. Uh, you know, there are so many uh, things, if you, if you notice, I remember seeing a movie called The Post some time back. Uh, the Post was on the Washington Post and how they reported a story of, um, you know, uh, there was a, uh, about the Vietnam War and how the Vietnam War was, uh, I mean, the scandal that actually happened uh, in, the, uh, you know, was it a war really? Was it really a war? It was that way. I mean, uh, or was it done to hype up some ratings of people? So, uh, you know, it was, and it was so powerful, that message. And um, uh, that is the kind of impact that journalists can have, uh, you know. And um, uh, so do watch such kind of movies also. You'll get an, imp you'll get an idea of what a journalist should be. Have a look at some of these international award-winning journalists also and their work. You know, um, I think it's called the Pulitzer Prize, which is given for journalism as well as literature and others. So yes. have a look at their uh, kind of work. How do they go about reporting? How do they interview, um, you know, in BBC, for example? Of course, I'm talking of English uh, media. The same is true in other regional languages also. You always have some exceptional people who use the brain. Journalism is about brain. It's not noise. You know, it's you, you use your brain and your hand to write, not the uh, voice. voice. So uh, uh, that's what my request to all the students would be. So thank you so much, Mr. Hitar, uh, Professor Hitar so Panda for inviting me. Thank you so much, my dear students. I really appreciate your work today. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, dear speakers for uh, coming over today. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Tejal Amin and Sandhya Ben for spending so much of your valuable time today with all of us. Thank you once again. I, I, I will not be able to conclude. I mean, a patrakar jeev jo hota hai, wo Sandhya Madam yaha pe hai, to unke bina mein kabhi ye soch nahi sakta hon ki conclude kar de. Because she has been my colleague. We worked for a long, long time uh, with Times of India. And uh, I remember when we came up with the first issue of Campus Observer, uh, there were several, you know, uh, suggestions which came to us and we were really serious about it. And this time it's even better. So Sandhya Madam and Tejal Ma'am both, we would like to have your comments, uh, uh, you know, and further suggestions so that we can continuously improve and, uh, you know, deliver something more better. Sandhya Madam. Yeah, thank you. I have just received the magazine. Yeah, so, I... <laughs> uh, a couple of minutes before I can uh, actually uh, look at it carefully and tell you. And, uh, you know, as a journalist also, we are trained to look for uh, issues, you know, in anything which we are covering. Uh, of course, we have to look at all the good points, but also where there, there are problems. And we have to bring them to the notice so that those problems are corrected and things become better. So, you know, I always feel that uh, as, as a journalist, we, when, whenever we are reporting something which is uh, not uh, um, what sometimes people call negative journalism, it is not really negative. It is, 
it is constructive yes because the, we what are we there for why are we the fourth estate or the fourth pillar of society we have to bring uh, to their notice what ha- what happens and uh, what is happening or what is going wrong and therefore many times we are called you know uh, jack of all trades master of none because we need to put our nose into every little bit of things which are going on and then try to find out what is happening in that area and um, and uh, when we are criticizing or whether it is constructive criticism or whatever we need to know what is happening in the first place to be able to criticize it so a journalist has to always be curious and always have to want to know more or in every field uh, there is no field where uh, the journal- journalist can say that no i i i don't know i don't understand this you have to understand it you have to find a way to work with it and so therefore many times uh stories get such interesting um, you know points of view because they have come from a point of view of not really a person who is a master in that field but from an outsider and it is giving one extra very interesting perspective to, to the whole problem and uh, therefore even today uh, you know whenever i write and i i am still an active journalist i write today i always um, i mean you always consider yourself a student of journalism you never really mastered anything actually because there is so much more to learn in this world so much more to know and so many interesting things which are happening every single day life is never never quiet life is never i mean now the corona virus is also making our life difficult but also interesting at the same time so we have to take that attitude and that is an attitude we have to cultivate amongst our students also is to forever look forever want to know forever want to understand forever want to know more and more and more and more about things and that is and how do we then um uh, reflect that understanding how do we then bring our understanding together and then articulate it in a way in which uh people find our writing interesting and would like to read what we write or what we speak that is of course another challenge but that also is a challenge one has to uh one has to master so thank you very much hitarth i am uh, very very impressed at the way uh, the journalism faculty is working and how your young students are taking uh, the different aspects of journalistic work um uh, you know it's understanding how to how to how to look at it how to do your best uh in that particular manner uh, forward and i'm really very impressed with uh, your work uh, you know the subject itself of the uh, newspaper vendor the one who actually goes door to door newspaper such a wonderful article such a wonderful um, uh, you know uh, such a wonderful subject to think about because there is so much we know so much we don't know and i mean to see people like uh, uh, the two fantastic people that you have interviewed there are so many such wonderful people in the world and there are so many such people who help bring our lives together i mean uh, even during the corona virus everybody said you are uh, you are getting a newspaper band nahi kar rahi i said no baba newspapers i require <laughs> they are my life blood i need to have that with the morning cup of tea the corona virus or no virus. Okay. so so well, the way thank is you. thank you very much and congratulations thank you. All of thank you so much thank you so much muskan over to you yes sir thank you ma'am thank you sir Uh, it is my privilege to offer a vote of thanks on the behalf of the whole campus observer team uh, nothing more success to this uh, such a grand event of the second issue of Com- of campus observer in the presence of ms tejal amin we are obliged to have you ma'am and thank you for attending our uh, attending our event our, tre- our team is also grateful for the presence of mr uh, nila yagnik and uh, and sandhya uh, ma'am for sharing their words of wisdom thank you so much ma'am for attending the event the panelists uh, of today's uh, event mr ketan trivedi mr ankur jain mr ajay umar and mr presley thomas did an excellent job in curating the second issue of the campus observer thank you sir
Our team also shares a feeling of gratitude towards you all and acknowledgement and acknowledge the time uh, you gave us. Thank you so much, sir. We appreciate the sincere cooperation of the faculty members and students from different schools for acting as a good source for our reporters. We thank you, Dr. Obi, the head of our department of our program, Dr. Mandana Talegaonkar, Assistant Professor Mr. Bhargav Pancholi, and Assistant Professor Mrs. Akhila Ma'am for their guidance and support. We also thank Mr. Dinesh Panchal, who, looked, who looks after all the technical aspects because of which such online events are possible. Thank you, sir. Now there's one person left uh, in the room uh, because, uh, whom we, uh, because we can't thank him enough for the efforts he had put behind in the making of this newspaper. Thank you so much, Mr. Hitat Pandya, for, uh, for your time and shared guidance that you gave us. At least, uh, at last, but not the least, we would like to thank all of the people witnessing the event for being such a great audience. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Hitat. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Ajay, bye. Thank you, my dear. Ketan bye, Presley. Bye. Thank you so bye. much. With your permission, thank you. thank you all. Thank you Have all. Have a safe life, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care, thank you. Bye bye. Can bye. I leave? Hitar, can I leave? Yes, yeah, sir. Please, please. All of us are leaving. Ajay, bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Presley. Thank you, Tejal Ben. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay bhai and everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. All thank guests, you, thank you so thank much. You, thank you, sir. You are a very good motivational speaker. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, bye. Please do come to our university, sir. Whenever uh, the lockdown, this yeah, yeah, things improve. Post corona, I'll definitely come. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye. Good day.